Try me on tu National Tuesday. Try me, bitch. Try me on National Tuesday. Okay? Try me. I want a motherfucker to try me. Try me. Try me on National Tuesday. Try me. Try me. Uh, hell, hey, hey, what's up? What's up? What's up, Evil Stories with UMD? Up in this bitch? I got some got some Fortnite gaming up here on the screen. This is actually something to fucking something to watch. This is so this is just me playing the other day. So enjoy that. Figured it's better than looking at my fucking boring ass uh you know, my background. But we are here today to fucking yap. For those of you who don't know, I am UMD. I'm a professional yapper. Thought it'd be fun to make a little podcast series where I document some evil stories of my life. Stories either I'm involved in or stories I've heard or read about. Just the fucking yap. Um... And first story we're going to talk about today is a uh, is a personal story. It's a story that happened a while ago. This happened back in let's see. I was working at Kroger. I was working at a city market in started at 2018 and then ended in 2019 somewhere around there. And uh you know, pretty much everything to expect. All it's typical retail. Uh, uh, uh. I was working the the check stand, so I was at a register, talking to a thousand people a day. That shit is exhausting. And uh, you know, I was doing all right at the time. I was making, I was making all right money. Uh. And, you know, sometimes silly things happen at work, and uh, sometimes you take advantage of it. Take advantage of those moments. Um, I remember one time I was working at a check lane, and I was walking around, and, uh, you know, I had some customers come through, and then they left, and uh, I was just, you know, walking around my check stand, and I noticed on the floor hundred dollar bill and I was like get the fuck out so I walk up to it I step on it and uh, I go down to I, I try to be as nonchalant as fucking possible I step on it and I pretend to like tie my shoes right and then I grab it lift it from under my shoe put it in my pocket tell my manager I'm like uh I need to go to the restroom it's like, all right, leave my check lane, go to the ba go to the bathroom, and, w and I pull out of my pocket a crisp, real $100 bill. I was like, holy fuck. Someone just dropped this. Are you fucking kidding me? That was, that was a day I, I, as you can tell, remember to this day. It was fucking awesome. So sometimes, you know, silly things happen. And we take advantage of it. Um, <laughs> uh, this isn't the only time that I... Oh, hold up. Why is this... Okay, whatever. This isn't the only time that I... Um, you know, was gifted a random $100 bills from just casually working at uh, Kroger. I... Uh, was working the self checkout one time, right? Doing as I do, walking around, making sure the customers are okay, making sure everything's fine. This lady comes up. This is like I'm working a late shift, so it's like you know maybe an hour before we close. This lady comes in and she buys like ten gift cards, like a hundred dollars each, and decides. 
to leave one to leave a gift card she buys all these gift cards and leaves one it was a it was a amazon hundred dollar gift card and uh she had already left before i had noticed the card was left behind and uh i pick it up i walk it over to the uh i have like my own little check stand uh, in case customers have problems with their own little self checkouts, they can come over to my stand and I can check them out there. And I, you know, kind of kept it there for a second. And then I put it in my pocket. And then I went to the bathroom. And then I opened the gift card and I scanned the code or entered the code or whatnot in the Amazon app. And sure as shit. I got that hundred. <laughs> Tossed the gift card in the, in the basket, and I was like, well, that's that. Surely nothing bad will come of this. <laughs> Lo and behold, I, uh, I end up uh, uh, coming in the work maybe like three or four days later, something like that. Or it might have been the next day. And, uh... I'm working on a check lane, right? And I get pulled into the security room, <laughs> which is never a good fucking sign, you know? Uh, usually when they're like, why don't you take a step in here real quick with us? You go like, okay, fuck. <laughs> and... uh. They just start, uh, they start get. I mean, it was the, it was the boss man, the store manager. It's him and like this other lady, who's like a, I don't know, just a security lady. I think asset who worked there, and they're just kind of, generally asking me some questions, about, have I ever taken money from the register? And I'm like, no, I would never do that. And then asked me if I had ever taking money from this taking money from that and they're just like asking me questions and i'm like no no i would never do that <laughs> and then they just kind of drop it on me they're like well we caught you taking a hundred dollar amazon gift card the other night the lady who had left it came back the next morning and complained and then we decided to look at the security footage to see what happened and uh we saw we put it, we saw that you put it in your pocket um do you have anything to say to that? And, you know, I was, you know, my genuine response was, I'm sorry. I was, I was crying. I was so sad. I was so upset. I was like, you got to be fucking kidding me. Fuck. I offered to pay it back, and they kind of just had this attitude like, yeah, you'll be paying, and you'll be fired, and you'll be leaving immediately. Made it a way bigger, in my opinion, a way bigger deal than it was. Like, good lord, sorry, took a hundred fucking bucks, willing to pay it back, like, whatever. Some people think stealing is a bad thing, and that's true. <laughs> um, you know, it is true. Stealing can be bad, I'll say. But, but, uh, that's just the moment I stole. I've reflected, you know. I don't steal like that anymore. Um, but yeah, uh, so they get me, the cops are, uh, or they called the cops and had them escort me out, which I also was just like, this is very dramatic because now everyone that I work with has to see me walk, just leaving with police officers. Granted, I mean, it was, I'm pretty sure it was kind of busy in that moment too. So maybe not everyone saw me, but I know one person saw me. One person saw me leaving with the cops, and it was, uh, I'll drop her name. Her name was Tammy. And she was what I would call 
a wretched bitch. She was awful. She was a gremlin. The most annoying lady to work with. No one liked her. No one liked Not even the other managers fucked with her. And, you know, I was like, well, this is probably the last time I'll ever see her. Uh, and I gave her the bird. I just threw, threw that funny little finger at her. And uh, her reaction was fucking priceless. I wish I had my phone out when I did it. Jaw completely dropped. Eyes wide. She was flabbergasted. And it was hilarious. Because I imagine it ruined her day. And I hope it did. I hope it did. But that's not where that story ends. That's not where that story ends, unfortunately. This was in 2018. 2019... I think it was in 2019 fast forward a couple years later 2023 i am working at a target and i'm looking for a new job because i fucking hate target now i do i used to like it i used to think target was like fun um smelled better walmart basically uh, uh, uh. and it was fun to get high and just walk around in target mainly in the electronics section just looking at fucking games and and all the other little toys and gadgets that they had it's a good time what could i say uh i no longer get those vibes now i think i think target is uh pretty lame for the most part I think only the lamest types of people find Target to be, like, cool. Alright, I'm rambling. Anyway, that's Target. Fuck Target, basically. I want to leave Target. And, um... I decided to apply back at a King Supers. I kind of... In my mind, I was like, it's been a while... You know, maybe, maybe they don't know. Maybe they don't know. Kroger just recently, uh, 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 I believe, unionized in some way. And now, now they get paid like buku money. They get paid good, good, livable money. And they deserve that. Every job deserves that. Um... And I'm very, very glad that cashiers and, and pickup workers at Kroger are now, you know, able to be more satisfied with their job and, and their life. Um, that's awesome. That's sick. It was also a main reason why I wanted to fucking apply. I was sick of getting paid motherfucking, what was it, 14 I think it was 14 or 15 an hour at Target. Fuck that, dude. Fuck that. Even I was even getting max hours. I was getting full, full hours. And it really was not enough. It was not a lot that I was making. I do not know how I was fucking paying rent. But I was. God damn, fuck Target. Um, so I go through the whole interview process with Kroger. Go through the whole thing. Right up until the point that they ask, uh, 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 or they don't ask, but they tell me. They go, uh, all right, we'll just have an email or so to uh, send out to you. Just got to fill out some paperwork and should be good to go. And then I ask, I go, are you saying I I got the job? And the lady behind the desk confidently says, yes, you got the job. And I was like, hell yeah, let's fucking go. I go home, 
and I'm feeling like amazing. I'm feeling insanely good. And then I'm waiting. I get my email stuff done and then I'm like waiting on like a call for like first day, you know? And uh, I get a call, but it's not a call I was expecting. Same lady. Uh, I didn't. I wasn't able to pick up the phone, so she left a voicemail. The voicemail said, uh, "So after further review, um, unfortunately, after coming back from our HR department, we're unable to hire you. We apologize." And maybe there's something else out there for you. Basically, they say something, some stupid shit along those lines. And I'm like, I'm like, you gotta be, you gotta be fucking kidding me. Seriously? After all that. And there was a lot, that was also the thing. I was like on and off trying to get an interview scheduled to get one figured out. I wasted so much fucking time. Just for them to deny me after saying they had accepted me. Truly a f- just fucked and flawed system. I'm 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 I from what I'm assuming my name is flagged in their system as someone they can't hire because of a gift card of which the charges I paid for and and I don't even think that shit comes up in my it doesn't I actually got a report back from a job I'm working at recently I got a report back telling me that when it comes to my background check nothing pops up So, like, that's something that needs to be addressed, I feel like. Um, Yeah, that threw me into a uh, mental frenzy. And then that next day, walking back in the Target, oh, I was fucking livid. Oh, I wanted to just throw every Target mom's fucking pickup order just Dump it all in the back of their car. I don't give a fucking shit. Fuck y'all. Fuck this job. Fuck the management here. Oh, I was so fucking furious. I think think it's a moment like that where you come to terms with like, the system is flawed. It does not benefit those at the bottom. And it fucking should. It should benefit everyone. And I don't even mean like benefit, but like what what would what would I say? It should be there should be better tools for people at the bottom to be better tools at their disposal to climb out of whatever fucking poverty or just financial like bills like just getting dumped with all these bills like it's fucked up some people get just cooked and I'm very very lucky and I'm very privileged because my my folks make good living and and I'm able to you know, ask them for some, some money here and there when I'm struggling. And I try, I really try not to fucking, I hate asking it. It it just fucks me up. And I don't know. I, I need to, I need to do something. I need to figure some shit out. (laughs) But, uh, I really thought Kroger was going to help me out. I thought they'd have my back. 
Well, I worked for Kroger for a good couple of years. And uh, they did not have my back. <sighs> Say what you want about the fucking gift card, but like, I don't know. I don't think it's that crazy of a thing to judge someone over. In the grand scheme of things. You know what I mean? Hey, you know what I'll say? This is a fun little thing I like to tell people that I heard from a rapper. You know what? On paper, I sound better than presidents. You know? On paper, the things I've done in my lifetime and the things, you know, Bush, Obama, fucking Reagan, <laughs> Nixon, what they've done compared to, to, to me, <laughs> who's the real villain? <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, so that's my, that's my little Kroger gift card story. I wanted to share that. Um, what's evil about that story? Uh, fucking... I think Kroger's pretty evil, basically, is my, uh, my take on that. Uh, I'm trying to do something, but it's, hold up. Oh my Christ. One second, I am trying to make it to where the gameplay plays, and I can still look at another tab here. Okay. All right. We're going to move on to the next evil thing. This isn't so much evil as just like, well, there's a, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to say what's going on. Uh, and then I'll talk about what's evil afterwards or what has this potentially this, this has the potential to be evil. Um, Wendy's has recently announced that they are collabing with the cartoon spongebob squarepants a show i hold very close to my heart is a part of my childhood and i love and probably i'm, pr I'm, I'm pretty excited about this collab uh, they're gonna do a wendy's vanilla frosty swirled uh with pineapple and mango like flavoring and that sounds kind of bomb i'm not gonna lie that sounds pretty good and i'm gonna i think i'm gonna try it uh, um so they have this new frosty this is also not a not a paid or sponsored ad I don't, I don't know if i have to make that obvious or whatnot but i'm just gonna say it just for the fucking sake of it i know no one if anyone even actually listens to my ramblings and gets this far and is hearing me right now probably doesn't even need to be addressed you're like yeah how about you shut up and continue reading i'm gonna do that um so the frosty isn't the only thing that'll be announced um article here that says this isn't the only bikini bottom themed surprise from wendy's on the horizon the chain is releasing an entire krabby patty collab meal consisting of three menu items krabby patty burger Hot and crispy medium fries, and of course, pineapple under the sea frosty. Uh, additionally, each order containing a Krabby Patty will receive a limited edition SpongeBob sticker sheet. What? While supplies last. What the fuck? I didn't know there was going to be a sticker sheet. I want that. I need those stickers. What the fuck? That's crazy. Uh, so I, I, I love this. You know? You know? I love this. However, you just... If I could talk to my... Uh, my late millennial, early Gen Z... Um crowd my spongebob fans if we could 
do a, do take a moment to remember the SpongeBob and Squidward episode where they uh, were striking against uh, the Krusty Krab. If we could harness that energy, <laughs> and I'm not saying we need to strike Wendy's, but we just need to treat the workers. Just leave, please leave them alone. Please don't, don't fuck with them. Because some of them are not SpongeBob kids. Some of them are Loud House kids. Okay? And Loud House kids, I, I don't know if they fuck with SpongeBob like that. So, but they, I'm sure they are also well aware of the SpongeBob fan base and how, you know, um, silly they can be sometimes. So this is, this is a moment. This is a moment where you can really show some maturity when you go and buy your little crusty crab meal to just order it, keep all your feelings to yourself, don't say anything, go home and eat it. And then, and then make your little little TikTok video. Do not go to the Wendy's with your phone and just start spouting SpongeBob quotes. Um, or I'm gonna start advocating for workers' rights to murder civilians. <laughs> they should have a legal right to strangle you if you if you say cringe. That's that's how that should work. If you say cringe when ordering the Krusty Krab meal at Wendy's, um, it's over for you. They they legally get to to stab a spatula, uh, a SpongeBob Krusty Krab making spatula, uh, into your stupid, annoying throat. I think that's a fair trade. I think that I think that works. I think that's that's fine. That'll be good. Um, yeah. Can y'all just chill? Just chill. Just. It's all I'm asking. This is a PSA to all SpongeBob enjoyers. Okay. I also will say it's kind of bullshit that there is even a collab if we are to look at like the original creator uh oh, fuck i forget his name it's like stephen hill something stephen H hillberg that's not right but it's i know it's like steve or steven something like that the original creator of spongebob did not want the show to have spin-offs the show to be capitalized on basically and Nickelodeon betrayed that, and and now we have, and, and now look at what what's going on. Nickelodeon's like, yeah, let's collab with Wendy's and just may just hope that the 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 general public will just be fucking normal, and that's a big hope. <laughs> that's a big hope. <laughs> Sorry, sorry, smoking, smoking it up. <sighs> oh, I was trying to. Let me hit this little vape ski. Right at the 30 minute mark. We're almost out of here. What else is going on? Um, fuck PlayStation. Holy shit. And Sony? the fuck are they doing i mean yeah the ps5 pro has been announced and uh i gotta say i'm not too that fucking impressed i ain't that too fucking impressed with it Uh, I got an article here. I'm just going to read. It says, everything the PS5 Pro offers is about graphics. The CPU is, as, is the same as the PS5 
and so is the SSD speed. The GPU, meanwhile, has 67% more computing cores, according to Sony, with 28% faster RAM and 45% uh, faster rendering. Uh, there's three big initial upgrades Sony is specifically pushing on the Pro for what the new GPU is doing. More ray tracing, automatic, AI-assisted game upscaling, which whatever the fuck that means. Uh, for 4K and a new Pro mode for games that will combine 60 frames and 4K together. An AI-assisted upscaling mode called PlayStation Spectral Super Resolution... That's a stupid fucking name. Works across the whole game library, but requires games to update via a patch, adding in details to upscale to 4K. It also work on PSVR 2 games in the future. Yeah. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, it's gonna look way cooler. It's gonna look a little cooler... And then it's got a, uh, it's also got a two terabyte storage, I believe, right? I thought it was a one terabyte. Um, it says here, it's also a more expensive piece of gaming hardware, $700 with a two terabyte solid state drive. System doesn't include optical drives. So they are sold separately. Doesn't come with a vertical stand or a second controller, which that's funny. It needs a fucking vertical stand, which those are apparently like uh, close to a hundred bucks too. So it's an eight hundred dollar console if you want the stand. On top of whatever seventy dollar ass game, you know that you're gonna you're gonna want to buy. But that's also that's the that's the this is the coolest perk of your of your PS Five Pro, right? Um, you're going to go to your local Walmart. You're going to go to your GameStop, wherever you get your, your games. You're going to pick up PS5 gaming. You want the new Call of Duty and you pick that bad boy up and you go home and then you open your, your PS5 game disc you, and you, you open the case and you take the disc and then you shove it up your ass Cause that's the only spot you're gonna be able to put that thing, uh, in your living room. Cause this PS5 Pro does not come with a fucking disc slot. Seven hundred dollars for no disc, slight like good storage. I'll give it that. It's got good store. Two terabytes is pretty good. Slightly better graphics and. And it's just got this, and then the little stupid fucking stripe on the side is bigger. Thanks for, and then you threw in a controller. I appreciate that. But, like, this is some bullshit. This is some bullshit compared to, like, the launch for the PS3. Uh, I've seen a lot of people compa compare this, this launch, and it's just, this is just abysmal. Are they going to do a PS6? I thought I remember reading about it, but I don't, it's like, ah, ah, I don't know. I don't know. It's just, uh, it sucks. I didn't even get the first PS5 because it's just so, it, that's even just too fucking expensive. They want like what, 600 bucks for it? Isn't it like 600 Without the disc, 700, it's like something like that, I think. Or maybe it's 500, 500 without the disc, 600 with the disc slot. They did some stupid shit like that, and I, that fucking pissed me off. Oh, man. I just, uh, man, I grew up with the PlayStation 2. I'm a PS2 kid uh through and through but i don't know i i remember the console war days and i remember just not really like not really giving that much of a shit about uh about what console was better or whatnot i just always thought 
I just thought video games were so cool. Just games and just in consoles alike. I thought the Xbox was really cool, but because I had a PlayStation 2, there was like a stigma uh, of like I couldn't like the Xbox, but I don't I still ended up having a homie even back in like early elementary school that had an Xbox and he would show me all the Halo games and and all the other Xbox games and um it was it was just cool to like video games. Video games were just sick as fuck. And now video games are just like in a weird very money driven spot right now and it's just I don't know. I I have a feeling like the next like 10 years are going to be rough for consoles. I don't even know how they're going to sell another console, PlayStation or or Xbox. Uh, From what I I I have more of a feeling people are going to pick up on on the on the on the you know just how much better pc is like it's not even an argument at this point i feel like pc just literally outshines consoles through and through and consoles are just kind of like uh uh, i don't know what would you call it like knickknacks almost (laughs) You know, they're like little. It's fun. It's cute to have a little. Oh, well, I got a little, a little PlayStation over there, and it it can play some games. But I really play all my games on my PC because that's you know, it's where all the literally all the games are, from games you want to emulate. So you already have a whole library of older games on your PC, and then you get all the newer games, and then anything that is a console only game eventually gets ported over to PC at some point. Uh, yeah, gaming is just it's not what it was and I feel like that's obvious now and um I'm just hoping like more indie stuff gets 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 uh, more pl- publicity and like gets uh, more shine in the general like zeitgeist of gaming just like talked about more just games that people wouldn't normally pick up or play or more people are playing those now Uh, it's really interesting how you can consume video games these days too like you can get it from like you can play video games in so many different ways which is crazy however like older games are way harder to play because of the lack of like preservation it's shit like that always like blows my mind um but like (sighs) yeah i've just i've always loved all consoles even the wii the wii was awesome i wish i got a wii u um, when that dropped, I, w- I wish I got to be a part of all of that, but I was, I think I was too busy being an alcoholic at that time. I think I was, I was too busy just playing, like, I was too busy crying over the fact that, like, Black Ops 4 had no story mode, and I was like, it was like 2018, and I was like, it's the end of gaming. <laughs> it's the end of the world. What has happened to this country? Where your Call of Duty Black Ops doesn't even have a story mode. This is what the left is trying to take from you. (laughs) This is the freedom. I don't fucking know. Uh, man. Yeah, yeah. Yep, capitalism's gay. That's my take. I, that's my my take as I'm rolling roll as we're rolling out of 2024 getting into 2025 anything that is profit motivated is uh cringe it is fucking lame and it's ruining everything 
It's ruining my video games. And I hate it. I wonder what video games would be like in Russia. Are there Russian video games? There wasn't computers in the 1800s, which sucks. But what about when Mao was in power? During with the Chi during the Chinese Revolution, was there was there was there a computer math video game that was made? Maybe. Okay, I just realized what I said. I mean, not I said math game, and that's not because they're Chinese. It's because those were just the earlier games made. Most early video games are just boring, nerdy math games. So that that's why I said that. Um, I love I love Chinese. I love Chinese people. I uh, fuck. It's over. Well, that's over. Well, okay, I'm going to end that episode. Thanks for listening. I I am canceled. I'm canceling myself. I'm canceling the show. This is episode four, and I'm done. I'm cooked. I'm over. It's over. Fuck. Okay. All right. All right. What am I even... What am I doing? Just... I'm just chilling. We're vibing. Okay. Sorry, I don't know. I was just having a moment. Self-correction. I don't even know if I needed to correct myself, though. Fucking shit is calm. I don't fucking know what to think anymore sometimes. <laughs> ah, I'm on meds. I'm on meds. I'm hoping these meds fucking help me. My brain is just fucking dumb, and it's all over the place. Um, your boy be thinking anxiously. Um, okay, I got a la one last thing I want to talk about now that I've just kind of fucking rambled about just nothing, and I, I don't know if I just made a racist remark or not. I didn't. I'll just say it. I didn't. But if you take it that way, fucking I'm sorry. I genuinely am sorry. Fuck. I don't know. I keep thinking about it. And I'm like, did, did I really even say anything that bad? I don't know. If it is bad, someone comment below and just let me know. And I don't know. If not, just tell me I'm gay and cringe. You can just tell me I'm gay and cringe in the comments. I'll allow that. I'll allow that. That's fine. Because it's true. I am. I'm both those things. 100%. Um... Okay, one last thing. <sighs> Fuck. Alright. I know I'm a very silly... I'm a very silly guy. I say a lot of silly things. Because I like to say silly things. Um, but I'm going to try and, try and get a little serious here. Um, so, recently, I caught this story... And this is just truly, truly evil shit. This is the shit that just makes your spine twi like twinge in a way. Uh, when you hear a story like this. Um, and it's a, story, it's a story like this that you hear and it makes you go like, I don't, I don't very much like this country. <laughs> um and I hope that, that 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 should resonate. So I'm going to read this little story here. This is the story of the very sad and and uh unfortunate passing of Mar Marcellus Williams. Um tonight Missouri executed this actually, this wasn't tonight. This was a couple days ago. Um but this what happened in Missouri. Uh, Missouri executed an innocent man. Uh, this is an article from the Innocence Project. It says, uh, Our hearts are with the family and friends of Marcellus Williams and Felicia Gale, who have suffered unimaginable loss and trauma. 
Mr. Williams' story echoes that of too many others caught in our country's broken criminal legal system. A black man convicted of killing a white woman, Mr. Williams maintained his innocence until the very end. His conviction was based on the testimony of two eyewitnesses who were paid for their testimony. No DNA evidence linked him to the crime. And the current St. Louis County prosecuting attorney acknowledged that errors made by the trial prosecutors, including mishandling the murder weapon and intentionally excluding black prospective jurors in violation of the Constitution, co uh, contributed to a wrongful conviction. Nonetheless, the Missouri Attorney General's office relentlessly pursued Mr. Williams' execution and opposed clemency. The Attorney General and Missouri Governor Mike Parsons ultimately denied the request for clem uh, clemency. Clemency? I don't know. I might be saying that wrong. Ignored the wishes of the victim's husband, who has consistently made clear that he opposed the death penalty for Mr. Williams. We are profoundly grateful to everyone who joined our fight for justice, as the United States Supreme Court Justice Thurg Thurgood Marshall, who before his appointment to the court also fought for the lives of black men condemned to death, once said, America can do better because America has no choice but to do better. And hearing about the murder of this guy, because this is just, just straight state murder. Um, rest in peace. Rest in peace, Mr. Um, Mr. Williams. I uh, did not deserve that. Um, I don't know, I don't know where it comes from, but I do hope more people going forward have more conversations about, um, the death penalty and how it's a little, it's a little weird, I would say. It's a little fun, a little fucking weird, uh, to have a law that says that the state can just murder somebody, uh just fully take this man's rights away an innocent man uh just <sighs> yeah um sorry i'm not getting i'm i'm not like trying to get all emotional uh, i'm just genuinely trying to collect my thoughts i don't I don't know how to make it you hear a story like this and you just like it's like why is this even still a thing why is this even still a law that we abide by we have the ability to do so much to change so much f for the better and every year we come up with like hundreds of excuses to just not do it from both people on the left and right it's just annoying to constantly have to listen to all the, the static all the bickering and like preach about progressive values and preach about being the greatest country and all this bullshit and then, then this guy, and then you have the story of, of, of Mr. Williams and I agree. I, I, I love that final statement. Uh, American can do America can do better because it has no choice but to do better. Um, and yeah, with that being said, um, uh, I've been trying to get more into reading about how we can change the system for the better. Uh, I found a really cool study group that I've been that I've joined, and uh, I'm gonna do my best to to try to you know be a part of of a of a community of people that have genuinely good values that. Um, material materially 
materially, sorry, materially will change things for the better. Um, Because I do, I want those things. I want, uh, even if it's marginal, Uh, even if I only make a a, a budge things a fraction of the way, I still want to change things for the better. And I think, you know, people who preach these things should act upon them as well. Um, but yeah, I plan to, I plan to get more involved in my community. Um, there's a, uh, a group, there's a group that's, uh, here in, here in, in my city that I'm gonna join soon, and, uh, I still gotta, you know, learn, I have a lot to have to learn. And, but I'm, I'm excited and I just, uh, I hope along my, my journey, I, uh, I get to talk about it here on my little podcast, maybe from time to time and, you know, talk about more, continue to talk about more evil shit. Uh, cause there's a lot of evilness in the world, but I, I believe there's more good that can overthrow it genuinely gen- like genuine good not just f- like faceless good like bandage policies and bandage reactionary just um, uh, am- amenities amenities or just you know po- more po- reactionary policies that we are always putting out um yeah, so that was me trying to get serious. Ah, uh, that hurt. That sucked. I hate being serious, but I try. I got you. Got to be serious sometimes, you know. But I just I'm such a goofball, and I just want to be silly. I just want to talk about silly, goofy things. But you gotta talk about serious stuff too, man. You gotta talk about the real stuff. I still have fucking seven minutes, almost eight minutes. Until this is over, what the fuck else? I only wrote down the four things I wanted to talk about, and I kind of, kind of figured that I was gonna fill out the rest of the time. And there's me dying in Fortnite because I suck shit at this game. I suck absolute balls. That being said, I'm about to get just stone owned, and I'm probably gonna play some more. I'm gonna play some more Fortnite. Fortnite's fun. I used to hate it. I used to be such a big hater, but it's actually really fun. It was probably more fun when it first came out, as like fans of that time will say, and I believe it. That's usually how most games work. Ah, I feel weird. I feel like I should have ended it earlier. But I also feel obligated to keep yapping until this is a full hour. If you've clicked off already, I mean, that makes sense. That's fair. That's fair. That's fine. Um, Man, uh, is there anything else going on in my life? Not really. I'm just out here and I'm just chilling. I need to make more music. I'm working on a song right now. We're gonna a song right now. Um, it's basically I'm just rapping over the instrumental for this LL Cool J beat that was off his newest record, which is really good. I really recommend it. Um, can't think of the name, but just you know, look at the new LL Cool J album, and it has a he's got a song with Eminem. It's called like Murder Gram. Do, do, something like that, but the beat is just, it's very, very nice. Here, I'll give you a sample, I'll give you a little taste, but I can't, I can't play a lot of it because I don't want to get, you know, I don't want to get no copy strikes. I don't want no copy strikes. Here's the taste. 
Oh, 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 oh. Bitch, I'm feeling murder. What's my sound? I'm about to turn the dust of Peter Parker. I'm gonna need to be to get my heaters, Parker. Is it a city? Oh, me in the cupboard of villains. Be all these rappers are killing me. Take Billy, how does it feel to be rapping for a day? But what was the seat that the ape? Okay, 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 okay. Wow, whoa, whoa, bro, whoa. Yo, why he rapping like that, though? Why he rapping like that, though? Okay. I ha I got you know I got some I got some shit I got some shite. The flow on that beat is just so fucking nice. Oh, it's so good. It's it's fun. Sometimes I don't know. I I love fucking rap, dude. I fucking love rap. I love rap music. I love rapping. I wish I had more fucking friends that knew how to rap and were into rap music fuck man i need to i need to find that fucking community just need more rap friends bro like ah if you're listening if you're out there i'll fucking cl i'll literally collab with anyone i do not give a shit i fucking love rapping and i'll fucking rap my ass off i'll do any song i'll do anything uh, call me chad anything for views uh i will rap for views i'm i'm i am I will rap for attention. It's f just so fun. It's such a good time. Um, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna end it a little early. I think I'll end it a little early. Cause uh, I can do that. Man, I feel like I'm running out of things to talk about, and this is probably getting pretty boring. But I hope you enjoyed. Hope you enjoyed Evil Stories with Hugh Ham D. Um, go to my SoundCloud and check out my songs, please. Um, November 5th is election day. Be sure to get out and vote, vote, vote. Uh, or I'm coming to uh, suck off your stepdad. That's a, that's, a, that's a, uh, Taylor, that's a Taylor Green promise. We need more Americans sucking off their stepdads. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. We out, we out here, we out here, we out here, we out here. Gaming, gaming, gaming. Bye!